What's up, guys? Coach Slayer coming at you. Top of the tip of the day. I got another top of the tip of the day recorded, but I need to edit a little clip out because maybe I got a little too intense. So I'm gonna release another one besides this one here soon too. If I'm out here running hill sprints, I'm actually doing a little daddy vlog too with my kids. But hill sprints, pictures. Every year, every summer, and forgive me for being out of breath, but it is what it is. Every summer, and uh, guys that train with me, you know, we have hill sprints as part of our program. Scott's over there blowing my whistle on my, my keys. And um, it's amazing to me how many coaches still implement poles and long distance stuff. And those same guys that implement and ask that stuff are usually the soft, out of shape, jello looking guys. And no offense, but you know, I got a lot of friends who don't have much of a background and they know better than that, you know. It's not the same energy system that our pitchers are using and we need to, you know, if one pitcher wants to do it, wants to do long distance because it feels good, he likes it mentally, nothing wrong with that. But it shouldn't be dominantly part of your program. That shouldn't be the only thing you're having your guys do. And hill sprints, sled sprints, um, sled drags, uh, dragging splint, uh, sprints, whatever you want to call them. It's the foundation of stuff that we do at LT not only to maintain velocity over the course of a season, but to pick up and gain velocity. I've got 10 years of data that shows how important and how much the, you know, the sprint work and uh, sled work and hill work, how important it is because the guys will either maintain or increase velocity throughout the summer because of, because of that. And when I was in high school, I can remember going to the field, doing a 100 meter sprint, 200 meter sprint, 300, 400, back down to 300, 200, and 100. And the guys that knew me in high school, I was in phenomenal condition, as I am now. Because, not because I'm sitting there bragging about it, but because I trained to be a crash. That's not ours, buddy. We're not using that. But because I wanted to be. I wanted to have that mental edge. And that's the thing about people. Yeah, I see false confidence. And in the summer, I see false confidence in players. As soon as something gets hard, their confidence goes to shit. And... If you had the preparation outside of the, the, the field, you know, outside of, you know, in between the lines, everybody's doing stuff, you know, if you're practicing and doing stuff for the most part. But the real development happens, you know, on your own, holding yourself accountable. I just did a podcast with Coach Calvi at South Alabama, my alma mater, and he talks about, you know, the best players are accountable for their own development. You know, they'll have their instructors, they'll have their strength coaches and stuff, but they're doing the stuff on their own. Because if you're not doing it on your own, you're not eating right, you're not doing little things right, you're gonna get very minimal gains compared to what you could do if you do it right all the time. And so tell the tip of the day without sitting here and I don't care if you guys think I'm bragging on myself, I don't care. I could care less what people think about me. I just know that I'm leading by example and that my guys that I train, the guys that I coach are led by the right example. You know, if I have somebody run, I'm just as easy and just as well to get in there and run with them. And I know every coach can't speak for that and that's a smaller percentage that do acting coach like that. But essentially, the tip of the day is, is hold yourself accountable in between your starts on the mound. Hold yourself accountable on that Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday this summer when we're actually able to start playing. You know, do things that are uncomfortable. Do the things that you don't want to do. And the other video I'm ta that I'm going to release soon is about discipline. And that's what it is. It's discipline. It's doing the things you don't want to do. And you'll understand that when you hear that video and the things and examples I use. But, you know, if you want to set yourself apart, you know, and Kobe Bryant, just died, you know, was it four months ago? And it's, it's so sad because it, it, you know, broke my heart hearing about it because Kobe Bryant was an inspiration to me as well, as well as millions and millions, if not billions of people in this world. And that guy got after it. That guy had that, you know, that Michael Jordan attitude just that we just saw in the last dance. All those greats have that same attitude. And you're not gonna get any sympathy, sympathy or empathy from me if I don't see you doing the work you know, I, I, I'm not going to sit here and I could care less if you feel sorry for yourself, you know, and parents that make excuses for your kids or parents that feel like they have to speak for their kids because their kids can't talk for themselves. You know, I don't feel sorry for you. I feel absolutely zero empathy for you guys. Um, we're not, none of us are born with anything. We all have to fight for everything we get. And if you're not willing to make the sacrifices in between the things that you're supposed to do, 
you know, development is not at your baseball practice or your basketball practice. That's not development. That's team practice. The worst kid in the nation does the same amount of reps as everybody else does at that same team practice. The real development happens on your own with your personal coach, your, your, you know, your, your instructor, your strength coach, whatever, and then doing the extra stuff on your own. So do the little things in between the big things. That's the toughest tip of the day. Laird, out.